Right, welcome everyone. This is uh, Kate Sour of Miracles and today I am giving my Christmas message. <laughs> um, and I've been guided just to do some readings out of a few couple of books for a Christmas message. So thank you um, for joining and listening. And as we get to the end of a particular time in the dream, there's, there's a, we get to the end of the year, we have divided up time into seconds, minutes, hours, days, months and years. I've probably missed a few there, but maybe that's... So let's use time. The Holy Spirit uses time for us to get out of time so we can shift into timelessness. Um, so I like to, at the end of the year, encourage everyone to just reflect on where they may have been this time last year or at the beginning of this year, 2018. Just reflect, even if you're listening to this recordings uh, at another time, just reflect over the last 12 months. And it's a really good way to have the Holy Spirit, Spirit contrast, the Holy Spirit's contrast in your mind where you are now to where you were 12 months ago. Um, it's a looking back in time and it's looking back to acknowledge the mind training, acknowledge the healing and through, through the acknowledging of, oh, yes, I have, uh, I am, have got more peace. Um, I am forgiving quicker. I am bringing all my upsets to the Holy Spirit a lot faster. You can acknowledge your, how, you've, how your mind has changed. And this is a really good time to reflect on it. So just you, it's for you, but it's, uh, it's a good time to notice uh, your commitments, your commitments and devotion to truth, to undoing the ego. That's the most important goal, which is forgiveness. I like to call it undoing the ego. It's all the same thing. It all it means the same thing. So it's a time to be quiet and reflect. Another thing that I would encourage you to do is to write your commitment letter for 2019. Bring, really get quiet and just... There's nothing wrong with saying, I want to undo the ego completely. If it hasn't already been undone, if it hasn't already been seen through. Jesus tells us we can awaken in any moment through the holy instant. But he also acknowledges that we have a lot of fear in our mind. And that's the Holy Spirit's job, is to walk with us, be our guide. So my message, my Christmas message is about acknowledging um, how you've practised forgiveness this year, not to beat yourself up if you have allowed the ego to um, rule your mind for a certain time, not to worry about that, just overlook that and to acknowledge uh, your gains and to recommit to this beautiful path of having all your fear undone by your guide and your friend. And so my Christmas message is around joining with Jesus and the Holy Spirit 
to really put that as your focus because we can't do this alone. We need our friend. We need our guide because otherwise we're asking the same thought system to lead us out of its thought system. And that can't be done. It's, he, Jesus says it's circuitry. You know, it's in a loop. <clears throat> we have to break away from that thought system. And he says our part is so little, just a little willingness, just a little willingness to acknowledge that I am upset, that I am out of peace, and to call the Holy Spirit in. So um, first of all, I'm just going to do a blessing. So I love you, I bless you, and I honour you. And as I see you, I see myself. And giving is receiving. And as I give the blessing to you and I see who you truly are, I receive the blessing in my mind of the knowledge of who I am. So I am joined with you in acknowledging the truth about who we are. And as I, I have to join with you, I have to see who you are to remember who I am. So my mind training course is to undo the false and to see the truest truth. Is true. So thank you. So inst instead of Happy Christmas or Happy New Year, I'm going to say I wish you the remembrance of God's happiness, of the happiness of God's mind, of the peace of mind. That's really the only thing that I could wish for you, that you can find a willingness to bring all the false thoughts to truth. We are affected only by our thoughts. And that's all we need to do, the little willingness to bring all our thoughts. And we don't need, all we need to do is say, Holy Spirit, you have this. I give it to you. I don't want it anymore. You help me see this differently. You show me the truth here. What is the truth, Father? Anything that works is to get a different perception. <clears throat> and that's forgiveness. Forgiveness is the activity, the practical application of this Course in Miracles. It's great to read it, but you need to apply it. And that's where the awakening is we're going to awaken to the real world. The actual world doesn't change, but the way you perceive it is, you will be seeing from God's mind. You will see everything as love, everything as God, because that's all there is. Non-duality, oneness is God. You're going to be in God's mind. You're going to be perceiving with his mind because you never left that. That's, that's the truth and it is possible. But what we have to do is we have to acknowledge that we have got blocks to the awareness of oneness. So we need to bring up all the blocks to the awareness of the perfect oneness, the perfect peace. So that's it for 2019. We just say I'm going to give every day into the willingness to bring all the blocks up. So as the blocks arrive in my mind, I don't look at the blocks and I don't entertain them and I don't sit, don't uh, go into fear and I don't, I'm going to repurpose all the blocks. I'm going to repurpose all my fearful thoughts. I'm going to repurpose them and they are going straight to the Holy Spirit. They're going straight to Jesus for washing away. So a new view a new understanding, a new realisation, a new way of seeing, a new way of thinking is going to come into my mind. So this is mind training. I'm going to don't have to worry about the blocks. 
All I need to do is be willing to give them to the Holy Spirit. So that's my commitment. And so my talk today is going to be about joining with the Holy Spirit and Jesus and getting to know those parts of your mind that are going to help you realise the truth. So um, this talk is being recorded on awakeningtogether.org and I'd like to read from Regina Dawn Akers, who's um, started up the Awakening Together. She was guided. She has written or she has some books have been written through her. This is a book called uh, The Keys to NTI. Just going to show that on the screen there. Um, and this is excerpts from the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. She has got quite a few books. If you want to find out, if you like what you hear me reading today, I suggest you Google these books. I'm sure they're available on Amazon. Um, Regina Dornacres uh, has her one-hour talk after mine every week on Awakening Together. And she does many talks on this um, uh, ra uh, radio website that you can link into. So um, she's a beautiful teacher and has got a beautiful, gentle nature. And I just love her so much for what she's done. We each play a part in this journey home. So I'd like to read this little part from. The Keys to NTI, New Testament Interpretation. And I read this as a voice memo to my students about a week ago. And some of them just said they just, their minds just expanded out into this beautiful love. And this is what we're looking for as we just quieten our minds and just connect to right now. Let's forget the past. Let's forget the future and let's just wholly be present now. This is from page 24 and it's called NTI Luke chapter 11. How shall you pray? Prayer is the unceasing act of thought. With every thought you pray for everything or for nothing at all. How then shall you think? I have already asked you to think with me by accepting my thoughts and laying your own thoughts aside. My thoughts are these. They are thoughts of forgiveness, love, acceptance, gratitude and rejoicing. Whenever you are not listening to my thoughts, you will know because you will not be at peace and you will not be happy. This is not a time to chastise yourself for chastisement is not among the thoughts that I give. If you are tempted to chastise yourself for forgetting me, you must again be listening to your own thoughts and praying for nothing. This is the time that it sh you should ask for your daily bread. This is the time of forgiving your own thoughts by laying them aside and again opening your heart to me. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks 
the door will be opened. Your father is the extension of love and his love has been poured out upon you. It is his, it is his only gift. Anything that is not the gift, anything that is not of the gift of our father is of nothing. And so it is meaningless and it has no value. Lay that aside and accept the gift given to you by our Father. So thank you, Regina. I've only read a little bit of that. Uh, that's um, it's just really beautiful uh, prayers. And just uh, these are the little the keys Regina shares through the voice that's come through her. I just want to read a little bit about what's at the uh, start. This um, NTI is a teaching about our one divine self. It helps us realise self, which is a capital S, by pointing out obstacles to that realisation and by providing simple practices that help us transcend these obstacles. Many people find NTI helpful and easy to understand. However, no teaching is for everyone. This abridged version is provided as a sampling of the wisdom taught in NTI. It is made available to help you discover if NTI is right for you. The chapters in this version are the chapters most often called favourites by students of NTI. We simply call them the keys. <clears throat> yeah, so sometimes it's nice just to have a little summary book of the keys, the things that we love the most. You see that with the Course in Miracles that many people have made little memes of the excerpts that they love. And so I'm going to um, read a little bit from The Course in Miracles now. So my Christmas message is not really from me. It's, um, I've, I've given a little bit, which is just um, what was guided to say at the start. And I've been guided just to read some things from The Keys to NTI and The Course in Miracles. So this is a section from Chapter 11, Section 7. Number one, the world as you perceive it, it's called the condition of reality. The world as you perceive it cannot have been created by the Father, for the world is not as you see it. God created only the eternal and everything you see is perishable. Therefore, there must be another world that you do not see. The Bible speaks of a new heaven and a new earth, yet this cannot be literally true for the eternal are not recreated. To perceive anew is merely to perceive again, implying that before or in the interval between, you were not perceiving at all. What then is the world that awaits your perception when you see it? He's telling us that the world, the real world, is remembered. We're going home to a place that we were in, a mind, um, God's mind, that we have forgotten. It's not a new thing, it's going to be remembered. And when we are under the ego and, we, and our mind is then in the mind of God, we're going to remember that we were all, that we've always been there. I'm going to now read another couple of uh, sections from 
uh, section eight, the problem and the answer. Paragraph three, you do not know the meaning of anything you perceive. Not one thought you hold is wholly true. The recognition of this is your firm beginning. So just sometimes when I first read The Course in Miracles, I felt like it wasn't giving me enough instruction. And now when I read it, I feel like all it's doing is giving instruction. I'm like, how did I miss this? <laughs> he's saying, he's asking us to recognise uh, the thoughts that we hold aren't wholly true. It always reminds me of Byron Katie's uh, work, you know, is it true? And there's quite a few uh, parts where Jesus says things like your thoughts aren't true. So the, recogni the recognition of this is our firm beginning. So he's asking us to just recognise that maybe our thoughts aren't true. You are not misguided. You have accepted no guide at all. Instruction in perception is your great need, for you understand nothing. Recognise this, but do not accept it, for understanding is, it, is your inheritance. Perceptions are learned, and you are not without a teacher. Yet your willingness to learn of him depends on your willingness to question everything you learned of yourself. For you who learned amiss should not be your own teacher. So the, the reason why I wanted to read this particular section of the course out today was to um, the message here is about coming to a, to give up yeah, as being your own teacher, to ask for it, for the guidance of the Holy Spirit or Jesus. To That's why I read that little part out from the keys to NTI, to ask, you know, let Jesus give us our thoughts. Let the Holy Spirit bring us a new way of thinking. So we really need to, in 2019, bring in this really big commitment and devotion that I want this, I want to undo the ego mind, I want the peace of God. And here he is giving us, um, asking us to a firm beginning comes from recognising that we do not know the meaning of anything we perceive. And that's really good. You can look around at everything you perceive and you can really get clear on all the meaning you've given it. Um, you just just look at everything. You can see them you can see other characters here that have given meaning to their things, the things that they value. And that's what he's asking us to do. Just look at the meaning of giving it. No one can withhold truth except from himself. Yet God will not refuse you the answer he gave. Ask then for what is yours, but which you did not make. And do not defend yourself against truth. You made the problem God has answered. Ask yourself there but one simple question. Do you want the problem? Do I want the problem or do I want the answer? That's really, he's asking us all the way through the course to question ourselves. Do I want the problem or do I want the answer? I need to answer that because I've got, I seem to have a problem. And um, it sort of goes back to rules for decisions where he says you've already decided because you've judged the situation. So we need to unjudge the situation by saying I don't know the question, which is I don't know how to judge the situation. Do I want the problem 
Well, in truth, I do not have any problems. I've got perceived problems. So this is the way out. So he's giving us this way out, the way to awaken. And I can guarantee you if you practice this and bring all your um, problems to the Holy Spirit and Jesus, he will give you the truth. He will, you know, he will be washed out of all the false thoughts in the mind. But he's asking us, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? Well, for me, I want the answer. I don't want any problems. Why would I want a problem? I want peace. So I want the answer. I want God's answer. Decide for the answer and you will have it. <laughs> for you will see it as it is and it is already yours. You may complain that this course is not sufficiently specific for you to understand and use. Now, I know when I first read the course for many years, I felt that. I thought, it's not meaty enough. I want. <laughs> I just thought, why doesn't he just give me, tell me exactly that I'm reading there? I see he's telling me that I couldn't get it. I couldn't see it for so long. Yet perhaps you have not done what it specifically advocates. Of course I hadn't done it. <laughs> this is not a course in the play of ideas, but in their practical application. So I think for a long time I didn't know how to apply A Course in Miracles. I, I thought it was a play of ideas. <laughs> It's an interesting read, <laughs> but we have to apply it. And he says, this is not a course in the play of ideas. It is a practice, we have to practically apply it, which is bringing everything to the Holy Spirit or Jesus. We have to, we have to do something when we're upset. We have to do something to put that crack of light into that thought that's being held tightly in our mind. If you read the section um, after Lesson 220, What is Forgiveness? He talks about these bands of iron. It's like your mind is just tightened and it's just like bands and bands and bands of metal and iron and steel are all going over and it won't allow anything to come into your mind to tell you of a different way of seeing it and so he's asking us just to be willing to crack open a little bit just a little bit of our mind we're still upset we still believe the person or the situation is wrong or whatever we just just that little crack to say do I want the problem or do I want the answer? Oh, okay, I actually want the problem. Oh, no, no, hang on, I do, I want to be peaceful. Okay, there might be another way of looking at this. So I will, I'm willing. And as we go along on this journey, we become, we realise that we get, um, we really got to hate suffering. <laughs> That's what it's got to be. I don't want to suffer. So I want another answer. Nothing could be more specific than to be told that if you ask, you will receive. The Holy Spirit will answer very specific, every specific problem, as long as you believe that problems are specific. Now, we do believe that we do have specific problems, so we will be asking. And as we're going up the ladder to an awakened mind, we have to work where we're at. We can't jump ahead. It's no use saying, oh, I'm sick. I know I'm not a body, but I'm sick. It's no use saying, I know I'm not a body. When you're, if you're sick, you think you're a body. <laughs> it's really good to just acknowledge where you're at. It's much better to be totally honest with the Holy Spirit and Jesus than trying to pretend you're further along. You'll get a lot. You'll, you will get a lot further along if you're more honest with yourself. Just be where you are. If you're in a really bad way, acknowledge it. If you've got a lot of fear, 
Don't try to distract yourself or flip away or do something. Just acknowledge it. You say, I've got so much fear today. Holy Spirit, please help me. I am just so in so much terror, so much fear, so much guilt, so much blame. I'm really upset with this person or that person. He says, bring everything. Um, yes, Regina says, self-honesty is a very important key. You have to be much more honest with yourself. And then that honesty, bring it to the Holy Spirit. Don't, as Ken Wapanek used to say, don't put white light on it. <laughs> Acknowledge where you're at. But Jesus wants us to acknowledge where we're at and be and come to him just come on your knees i used to get down beside my bed on my knees crying you know whatever it was and i believed i had specific problems and there's no nothing wrong with that it's, we just don't try to if this course is not about looking spiritual it's not about um holding a steady gaze and being the love and flitting into rooms and saying, hello, everyone, oh, I'm feeling the love, when you're not. We're removing the blocks. We have to acknowledge the blocks. So if you're feeling really terrible and crappy and awful and fearful and you're feeling sick, just acknowledge it and be really honest about it and bring it to Bring it to Jesus. Bring it to him. Lay it at his feet and say, this is where I'm at. This is what's going on for me. This is all the guilt I've got over my being a bad mother. This is all the guilt I've got over being a bad daughter. You know, all these things, this is what I'm believing in. We can't heal, um, heal it. Heal, we ha can't have this healed unless we acknowledge it. So in the, the ending is when you have a peaceful mind. Um, and um, so, so, yeah, forget about being spiritual or looking good or pretending or call, Jesus calls it putting the face of innocence over. I just call it putting, putting icing on a shit cake. Sorry, that's probably a bit... But that's the way I see it. You've got a whole thought system that is pretty horrible and murky and you're trying to put this nice, sweet, syrupy icing on it. Well, let's just rip, rip the cake apart and remove all the untrue parts. And what's underneath, it's like a layer cake. You've got the icing that you're trying to put on, then you've got all the shitty crappy stuff and then underneath the layer at the bottom is the peace of God, is the beautiful Christ, love, all your beautiful loving thoughts. But you have to get rid of the inner, try to look, trying to look innocent, trying to pretend to be something you're not. You get rid of that. Then you've got to expose all the shit that's not true, which you're trying to hide by the face of innocence. You've got to look at those and give them all to the Holy Spirit or Jesus so that you can see that's not who you are, they're not true. All those thoughts are untrue. And as they leave, you're left with this beautiful, beautiful bottom layer of the cake that is delicious and gorgeous and true and lovely. And that's who you are. And those thoughts are going to come in and they're going to tell you of who you are. So the way to that is to expose the untruth and this is where we need to be honest. So his answer is both many and one. As long as you believe that the one is many, you may be afraid of his specificity <laughs> for fear of what you think it will demand of you. But we can, when we start to... Ask the Holy Spirit of another way of seeing it. He, Jesus does say that we are going to be fearful 
of what is demanded of us through, you know, are we going to change too much? Am I going to be asked to do things that I really don't want to do? Yet I would just say just in that moment, forget all about that and in that moment just bring that grievance or that upset or that guilt or whatever it is that's upsetting you, bring it to the Holy Spirit. You need to get quiet and you need to sit quietly and bring that up to the Holy Spirit and acknowledge everything that the ego is thinking. Yet only by asking will you learn that nothing of God demands anything of you. So through the practices of these forgive, for forgiveness, through practising it, um, you start to learn that there's nothing demanded of you and actually the opposite. You start to feel more joyful, your relationships are restored to love, you feel much more loving to everyone. And... Your needs, your needs become very simple. Your desires for things of the world drops away or you, lose, you start to see a lot of things that you valued before become valueless, but that's just actually frees you. It frees you up to be more joyful. You, you, you call it travelling lighter. <laughs> God gives, he does not take. When you refuse to ask, it is because you believe that asking is taking rather than sharing. The Holy Spirit will give you only what is yours and will take nothing in return. For what is yours is everything and you share it with God. That is its reality. Would, would the Holy Spirit, who wills only to restore, be capable if, of misinterpreting the question you must ask to learn his answer? You have heard the answer but you have mis misunderstood the question. You believe that to ask for guidance of the Holy Spirit is to ask for deprivation. This is something that we have to, um, with the ego will tell you um, that the guidance of the Holy Spirit will lead you um, into many, you know, evil deprivation is lack, that you'll be lacking something. So this is another part of the journey that you need to go through. It's like breaking through these brick walls. You need to develop a, another level of trust. As you say, I want the Holy Spirit's guidance above all else and I'm going to trust in that guidance. Little child of God, you do not understand your father. You believe in a world that takes because you believe that you can get by taking. And by that perception, you have lost sight of the real world. You are afraid of the world as you see it. But the real world is still yours for the asking. Do not deny it to yourself, for it can only free you. Nothing of God will enslave his son whom he created free and whose freedom is protected by his being. Blessed are you who are willing to ask the truth of God without fear. For only thus can you learn that his answer is the release from fear. So this is just this deepening of this trust and understanding that God and the Holy Spirit are here to help us undo, unwind from all these negative thoughts about ourselves and the world and others and all the thoughts of separation. Beautiful child of God, you are asking only for what I promised you. Do you believe I would deceive you? The kingdom of heaven is within you. Believe that the truth is in me, for I know that it is in you. God's sons have nothing they do not share. Ask for truth of any son of God and you have asked it of me. Not one of us has but the sorry, not one of us ha but has the answer in him to give to anyone who asks it of him. I really love uh, 
the teachings are that we need to share this love, we need to extend this love, we need to see our brother as who he truly is. These are all parts of awakening. We have to see that heaven, the kingdom of heaven is within us. It is in us. It's not outside. It's not some place we go when we die. It's here now. Kingdom of heaven, which is the peace of God, is within us now. And the only, our only way we're not experiencing that is because we have blocks and that these blocks are going to be undone by the Holy Spirit. So we have to be willing to allow Jesus, the Holy Spirit, any guide that you have to help you undo those. So now I'm going to be reading from um, section 12, chapter 12, uh, section 2, number 7, the way to remember God. This is Jesus. I just really love I was listening to this this morning on my walk. Um, I love it. And the, the last bit that I read was Jesus speaking directly to us. I love these really where he really, you know, comes in very clearly and says very clearly these direct statements to us. A little while and you will see me, for I am not hidden because you are hiding. I will awaken you as surely as I awakened myself. For I awoke for you. In my resurrection is your release. Our mission is to escape from crucifixion, not from redemption. Trust in my help, for I did not walk alone. And I will walk with you as our Father walked with me. Do you not know that I walked with him in peace? And does not that mean that peace goes with us on our journey? It's just really beautiful. Some of those sections are so gorgeous where he's really like putting out his hand and asking us, you know, come with me, walk with me in peace. You know, I awoke, um, I woke, I realised the truth. I've channeled this book, I've channeled, you know, all these other books that have come through, this one from Regina. These are books that his message is coming in and all we need to do is just, just grab, grab them. And we really have to say, you know, ask yourself, are you really happy? Are, are you happy with um, your thought system at the moment? And that's really where, you know, you need to be honest. And then what have I got to lose? What have I got to lose by just joining with the Holy Spirit? There is no fear in perfect love. We will be, sorry, we will but be making perfect to you what is already perfect in you. I love that. I love that fact that we have got this absolute perfection as our true nature that doesn't need fixing or changing. We don't need to do anything to um, be perfect. And this was one of the earlier things that the Holy Spirit helped me learn was that there was a part of me that um, my true nature was already perfect. It was created perfect. And and the thought system of the ego is a thought system that's constantly telling me I'm unworthy and it's constantly giving me ideas of things to change about my body um, and my situation to try to be better. And so when you're living, and then it's also seek and do not find. So this idea that I am already perfect and it's changeless, it's a beautiful way to sink in to the truth of your who you are. It's a beautiful way to remember that I need to do nothing because I'm already whole, I'm already complete, I'm already perfect. And in that, you know, just, just for me, just that constant remembering every day, I don't need to lose weight, I don't need to get a better job, I don't need to 
have a better house or all these things that were valued that I thought if I could have those, I would look successful. Um, going right back within and losing, just seeing that even to um, obtain or even the idea of getting certain things in the world, the ego would keep attacking me. I saw its attack thought system. I saw it for what it was. It was, I was never good enough. Its thought system was telling me I was never, ever good enough the way I was. It was always trying to advise me on how to change to get the happiness, to seek something. So this Perth, this is when Jesus tell us that we've already that we've already got our perfect eternal nature. Um, that's really beautiful because we can relax and we can give up doing anything to try to be better because we're already perfect. So in that one teaching, it frees you up a lot. You can say, "Oh, I can be anything. I don't. It doesn't matter what this body looks like because who I am." Is already perfect and that's my true nature that's who that's my self with a capital S you do not fear the unknown but the known you will not fail in your mission because I did not fail in mine he's so beautiful he's really saying hold my hand come on you won't fail I didn't fail and because I did it I'm going to bring you along with me but you have to choose because we have got um, we're part of God, so our mind is um, amazingly um, powerful. He's not going to come in and, and um, undo what we made. We made the ego, but he's going to ask us to choose against it and choose for him. Give me but a little trust in the name of the complete trust I have in you. <laughs> I'm so beautiful. Can you imagine Jesus sitting beside us saying that? <laughs> saying, I've got complete trust in you. Can you trust me? All we have to do is look at him and say, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we will easily accomplish the goal of perfection together. So that goal is just to see or everything else is false. For perfection is. I love that. It's, it is, which means it's a truth and cannot be denied. <laughs> to deny the denial of perfection is not so difficult as to deny truth. And what we can accomplish together will be believed when you see it as accomplished. You who have tried to banish love have not succeeded, but you who choose to banish fear must succeed. The Lord is with you but you know it not, yet your Redeemer liveth and abideth in you in the peace out of which he was created. Would you not exchange this awareness for the awareness of fear? So it, all these teachings around mind, we're talking about awareness, we're talking about thoughts, we're talking about fear. Now, fear is fear thoughts. They're thoughts. So we're all, this is mind training. It's all done in your mind. So don't worry about your behaviour. Your behaviour will just follow what your mind, mind is doing. When we have overcome fear, not by hiding it, not by minimising it, and not by denying its full import in any way. This is what I was sharing before. We have to be honest. When we don't deny the fear, we don't, you know, push it aside and go and watch Netflix. We want to get quiet and say, okay, I need to look at it. This is what you will really see. You cannot lay aside the obstacles to real vision without looking upon them for to lay aside means to judge against. So we have to judge against. And how we judge against is we ask the Holy Spirit to judge them for us. And amazingly, you will get such an amazing journey when you join with the Holy Spirit. I mean, I can't say how many times the truth that came in absolutely amazed when I gave it to the Holy Spirit, every single problem I perceived. 
he showed me, he got me to do little exercises, he got me to um, do some things in my mind with that person. Uh, he brought in messages from the course. There's just so many ways um, that he will undo it for you. You have to bring it to him and you have to be honest about what's in your mind. If you will look, the Holy Spirit will judge and he will judge truly. Yet he cannot shine away what you keep hidden for you have not offered it to him and he cannot take it from you. It's so important that we give everything. We have to really like go through your life and every single thing you see and every time you get upset, it's got to go to the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes when you're in a situation and you really feel charged inside, the best thing to do is not to speak anything out. Um, just hold it in. And find a time when you can get quiet as soon as possible and sit with the Holy Spirit and then just bring it up and say, okay, I was furious with when this person said this and blah, blah, blah. Like be very, very honest. Work with exactly what it is. I call it let the ego rip because you want to bring up all the hidden hatred and all the secret sins you want to hear. You want to bring everything up that you're believing in. Because how can it be healed when you keep it hidden? So don't hide. He cannot shine away what you've kept hidden. So don't think, oh, I'm such a terrible person. Oh, I'm really feeling hatred for my mother or my father. Oh, no, I, I really want to be nice. I'll just, I'll just pretend and I'll just send them a nice heart little message today that I'm secretly, I'm really hating that person. Sit quietly and bring your hatred to the Holy Spirit. Bring it up and you'll find that what happens is it just disappears. <laughs> it just go into this love and that's really unexpected. So as you start doing this, you're like, oh, the more I bring to the Holy Spirit, the more I get this different view and getting all these different answers. We are therefore embarking on an organised, well-structured and carefully planned program aimed at learning how to offer the Holy Spirit everything you do not want. So this is Jesus. This is Jesus' instructions telling us that we're now embarking. So for 2019, let's like really fully commit, like write your commitment letter out and say, I'm going to embark on this organised, well-structured and carefully planned. This is a, Jesus has carefully planned this for me. And... It's, I'm going to learn how to offer the Holy Spirit everything I don't want. The Holy Spirit knows what to do with it. You do not understand how to use what he knows. Whatever is given him that is not of God is gone. <laughs> so what happens is as we do it, it starts to leave our mind and that's what happens. Is the, That's the obstacle to peace is that hatred and that, you know, when you're in that. So this is the mind tray. I've got it. It's a practical course. I've got to do this. I've got to get quiet. I've got to be honest. I've got to acknowledge I'm upset. I've got to give it to the Holy Spirit. And then I've got to be open for another answer. Whatever is given him that is not of God is gone. Yet you must look at it yourself in perfect willingness for otherwise his knowledge remains useless to you. So you are going to hold on to that way of saying that grievance, that guilt. You're going to hold on it for another 20 years. <laughs> Who wants to hold on to it for another five minutes? I don't. I want to live in the peace. I much prefer to be wrong about everything. I just tell everyone I'm wrong about everything. Everything, everything is wrong. I just want to be wrong. If I get to have peace of mind by being wrong, I want to be wrong. So everything about every single thought I had, I said it must be wrong because <laughs> I wanted peace above all else. So this is beautiful and it just comes from a happy, from a happy learner it calls, a happy learner. So, okay, 
all right, I seem to, my dad seems to be doing this or my mum or my sister or my brother, they seem to be doing this and I seem to be outraged, but I want to be wrong. <laughs> Surely he will not fail to help you since help is his only purpose. So the Holy Spirit's purpose is the only purpose. Now you have the Holy Spirit in your mind, you have to ask. He's got the answers waiting there. He's, he's, he's like ready there like, when's she going to ask me? When's she going to ask me? I got the answer. I got the answer. I got the answer. It's like, he's like, come on, Kate, give it to me. Do you not have greater reason for fearing the world as you perceive it than for looking at the cause of fear and letting it go forever? Let me check the time. Okay, it's three minutes to go. So... <laughs> This is my Christmas message is to put the Holy Spirit or Jesus as the most important or your guide, whatever guide you have that helps you, is to put that as the most important thing in your life. I want to be willing to ask more. I want to be willing to ask for help more and more and more. Please, my devotion and my commitment is to every time I'm upset is to ask for help and to be quiet and to listen and to be wrong. I want to be wrong. I need to be wrong for me to be at peace. I have to be wrong about every single thing in this world. So that's my beautiful uh, lesson. So I'm just going to quickly um, share a, a prayer. Uh, this is lesson 345. I offer only miracles today, for I would have them be returned to me. Father, a miracle reflects your gifts to me, your son. And everyone I give, everyone I give returns to me, reminding me the law of love is universal. Even here, it takes a form which can be recognised and seen to work. The miracles I give are given back in just the form I need to help me with the problems I perceive. Father, in heaven it is different, for there there are no, no needs. But here on earth the miracle is closer to your gifts than any other gift that I can give. Then let me give this gift alone today, which born of true forgiveness lights the way that I must travel to remember you. Peace to all seeking hearts today. The light has come to offer miracles to bless the tired world. It will find rest today, for we will offer what we have received. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful Christmas and blessings for a new year. I'm going to stop the recording now. Thanks, Dawn, and thanks, Regina.